Kira Koto and welcome to this screencast about Level 1 Brief Development. This relates to Technology Achievement Standard AS91044 Undertake Brief Development to Address a Need or Opportunity, which is at Level 6 of the New Zealand Curriculum. There are a number of key resources which will help to unpack the standard. These are the standard itself, the teaching and learning guide, the clarifications, exemplars and the national moderators report. You can find the first two documents speedily by accessing the technology matrix under the resource tab on the Mint Education website. The hyperlinks take you straight to the relevant documents. All other resources, including the standard and the teaching and learning guide, can be accessed from the technology homepage on the NZQA website. The clarifications provide a succinct explanation of what is required from teachers and students. At level one, the teacher provides the context and issue. A context is an overarching theme or general topic. It is the focus of technological development or the learning experience. An issue sits within the contexts. It is a subset. This diagram helps to explain the relationship between a context, an issue and a need. The context is represented by the blue circle. Inside the context there are issues represented by the red circles. A need arises from the issue and is the identified requirement of a person or a group of people or an environment, in this case represented by the green circles. For example, a context might be fundraising for charity. The issue might be to make something to sell at school market day and then the need would be the item or product to be developed. As another example, a context might be healthy homes. The issue might be that keeping warm is difficult in winter for the elderly. So the need might be something to keep an elderly person warm. Around the circle you can see some suggestions for other contexts and also you can look at the UN Sustainability Goals for more ideas and inspiration. The explanatory notes in the standard are where you will find some further key points. Explanatory note 3 is where you'll find the definitions of needs and opportunities. They're also explained in detail in the teaching and learning guide. Explanatory note 4 explains some further considerations. Number 1. The student doesn't need to make anything. Brief development is for an intended outcome which may be a conceptual design or a prototype. Number two, the issue needs to be real and relevant. And number three, stakeholders need to be available to the student in order for there to be effective engagement. For example, we could use the context of space exploration and the issue of food preservation. But unless you know people at SpaceX or NASA, it's going to be difficult for most Year 11 students to engage authentically. However, if you have local community connections you can leverage for a given context, that's an opportunity. This is not about Project Envy though. Discreet, highly personal and manageable will work just as well. How many stakeholders does the student need to find? Well, the standard talks about a key stakeholder and in explanatory note 2 it says reflecting the key stakeholders opinion so that means there only needs to be one key stakeholder so now we can consider what evidence must be collected and how we can capture this evidence and there are a couple of useful tools to help us First of all, in Google Translate, you can set the input language to English and use the microphone icon in order to speak directly into the microphone and have the program convert speech into text. 
Then you can cut and paste the text into a Word document. This also works well in reverse because you can take whatever has been written, cut and paste it into Google Translate and use the speaker icon to have the program read it back to you. This is very useful for students for whom English is not the first language because quite often it's easier to detect errors when you hear what's being said rather than looking at it on a page. Within Word, there is also the facility to use speech to text using the microphone icon. In response to the lockdown situation, NZQA has also further developed some resources and suggests using other strategies such as using cameras, annotating images, video, voiceovers, e-portfolios and so on. NZQA has also carried out a review of the technology achievement standards in the technology matrix and colour coded them for ease of assessment. As you can see in this image, achievement standard 91044 is green coded, meaning that it is very suitable for remote teaching, learning and assessment. One further resource that NZQA has developed is a form to help gather the evidence and the criteria for achieved, merit and excellent are very obviously shown. As a reminder, at level one, the teacher provides both the context and the issue for the students. So where do students start? Well, as Alice in Wonderland was advised, begin at the beginning and when you get to the end, stop. At level six of the curriculum, students may be most comfortable following a sequential set of activities during brief development. Bear in mind that below level five or year 10, there is no mention of specifications. So you may have students in your class who will need some explicit acts of teaching in order to make sense of this. In the next few slides, we're going to be looking at both food and textile examples. So please be aware that what I'm showing you is year 10 work and is a representative snapshot, not a submission walkthrough. In this example, we have a context of sustainability and an issue of transporting items. The student has started by exploring the issue, undertaking a task analysis, so that they can clarify their own understanding of what they have to do and to help them identify some desirable characteristics or attributes to consider further. Attributes are the general characteristics or aspects of the physical and functional nature of a technological outcome. Physical refers to what it looks like and functional refers to how it works. So for example, we could say that a product must be colourful and attractive to look at and it should be easy to hold in your hand. Specifications define the actual requirements of the physical and functional nature of the outcome in more detail and in a way that is measurable. So for example, we could say that a color must be blue and that it should be no larger than 10 centimeters squared. If you talk about a range of general characteristics that might be useful, then you don't rush to an end product. By exploring the nature of outcomes, you can use attributes to evaluate outcomes, to evaluate design ideas, and to evaluate design decisions. These templates can be found in the Hetan Story Quilt resource and in the Kitchen Machines Student Guide. It's important to introduce word banks so that students can access the range of descriptors they need and support their ability to use language effectively. And it's for these reasons at level one that you might also want to consider using writing templates to help scaffold what they are doing. The key thing to remember about scaffolding is that it is a temporary support. If you plan to put it up, also plan how and when you will dismantle it. Once students are familiar with attributes, they can use them for screening purposes. 
use them to rate existing outcomes for the desirable attributes they have previously described. Gather dimensioning data, such as in this case the size of items that need to fit in the bag, and take a user trip or engage with the product in its intended physical or social environment and record their experiences. Assist students to present their research in accessible ways, sketches, annotated photographs, photo stories, tables, graphs, charts and graphic organisers. All of these will assist students in helping to develop good strategies for themselves. Encourage students to think about where they would situate the intended outcome, who would use it, the age or gender of the user, where they would use it, in one place or in many places, and who else would interact with it, in other words, the wider stakeholder considerations. For initiators or inspiration, students may find it helpful to create a mood or inspiration board and extract design elements, such as colour, line, shape and so on. We're looking for possible combinations, pieces of the whole that we can put together and rearrange to create something new. These seeds of design ideas can be included in a new product. Testing ideas against a range of filters helps to evaluate design ideas and make design decisions. Teachers can help students by offering a range of opportunities to collect and collate relevant research that informs brief development. At the same time, you're providing a rich and varied learning experience. Class contributions can be shared collaboratively, provided that each student summarises collated information in order to draw their own conclusions. In this example, in a group activity, students wrote one desirable attribute on a post-it note. The collected post-its were then sorted into separate categories of physical and functional attributes. Each student could then prioritise these for themselves. In a user trip, each student analysed their own dehydrated pasta snack. The overall results were shared so that the student could draw their own comparison star charts. A variety of filters was used, including hedonic ranking, smiley faces, and of course, word banks to provide the scaffold for students to write a summary of their findings. Having completed the process of brief development, the student will produce a conceptual statement and a set of specifications. These are design specifications, not manufacturing specifications. So an attribute for a pasta dish might be, it should look attractive. A design specification might be, it should look attractive with a lightly browned crust. A manufacturing specification might be, it should look attractive with a lightly browned crust, finished with toasted breadcrumbs and finely grated parmesan. As has been stated previously, there's no requirement in this standard that the outcome specified in the brief is actually produced by the student. This standard is assessing brief development work and not the student's ability to produce a conceptual design for an outcome or to actually make the outcome. You would expect to refine the brief and develop the manufacturing specification as a result of undertaking further development of conceptual design, technological modelling and prototyping, all of which can be assessed using different achievement standards. Thank you for sharing this podcast with me. My name is Pippa Lawler. I'm the Kayarahi for Technology for Subject Association Hetans. This podcast has been made available through a grant from the Networks of Expertise. If you have any further questions, my email is mintednz at gmail.com. Ka kite.